the commissioner's work session, December 8th, 2021. I've read meeting assessment in person or via Zoom. Um, regards to the work session, item number two, um, Becky Yonker had to cancel today. So in place of that, we'll put in Cherry Capital update. Tim Malone's here from Cherry Capital, so he will be number two, all right? And I guess number one's not here either. I don't see Dan Scowl. Well, then we're up to Cherry Capital. Tim, you ready to go? Tim, Tim's on. I got Tim on. I got Tim on the fly. I got Tim on the fly today. Instruction. That's the way it is every day. New surprises. Um, in the area of delivering capital improvements to infrastructure, uh, we've hit a really unusual time in telecommunications. And that is over the last 12 months, the definition of what is broadband uh, has changed four times. So it started off at 10 by three, went to 25 by five, began to push 100 by 20. And now with the new infrastructure bill and especially the rec reconciliation bill, they're now talking about 100 by 100 symmetrical, which means the speed, the same direct, both either direction, um, which is uh, amazing. And what that's done is ARPA, if you were to allocate money to broadband, which you did, um, that project would have to meet 100 by 100. Um, and fortunately, your selection was you know, validated by what we're doing, which is gigabit. Uh, programs that have been out there for a long time, uh, uh, such as ReConnect, have adopted the newest standard. So it was written for 10 by three, but now to get ReConnect funds, you have to do 100 by 100. And 100 by 20 is considered underserved. 25 by five is considered not served. So great opportunity to go after additional funding, great opportunity to expand the area that is underserved. So therefore more and more people can get better internet uh, with, with the funds that are there. So, uh, What's happened because of the infrastructure bill, the state of Michigan has formed a new office, uh, Michigan uh, High Speed Internet Office, my hi ho, which is uh, an unusual acronym. I hope they change it, uh, but it's good for the Christmas season. Exactly. So it was good timing on their part, but they released a strategy paper that embraces the 100 by 100. So across the board, county, state, fed, uh, all have to raise the bar to what is fundable deliveries. So Cherry Capital Connection attended a couple of webinars and the reconnect is the most promising at this moment. Um, there is a, uh, if you look at the, the status report that was highlighted in item one and item three, additional funding opportunities. And there are, there is a non-competitive $300 million set aside, 100% loan. And then there's two competitive uh, pieces to it uh, for $300 million and $350 million, which is a 50-50 loan grant and 100% grant. Uh, the uh, applications are now open and they have to be finalized by February of 2022. Um, the good news is, as we were doing RDOF, we were challenged by a lot of people, including ourselves, to create what's called RDOF Plus. And so we looked at how to expand the reach of RDOF. And that particular funding model, uh, which was to attract private investment, um, fit reconnect uh, almost perfectly. So that work that we did over the summer in preparation for additional funding uh, will play very quickly into reconnect. Uh, so we will be going after up to a $25 million loan. Um, we will probably also look for a 50-50 loan grant. You can apply multiple times, get into the system. 
Um, and the good news is the ARPA money can be applied uh, to the matching portion of the grant uh, and grant loan. Uh, the loan does not require any matching funds. And it's, and it's attractive enough loan terms that we're comfortable taking on a $25 million debt in order to do it. Now, this will affect Ross Common all the way to Lenoir County. It's the whole RDOF area that we have. And of course, since we're starting in Ross Common, Ross Common benefits first in the process of what we're doing. So I just wind up. So what we'll do is once we get a handle on the language we're looking for and get in front of you a synopsis of reconnect, I will be asking for uh, a resolution of some sort in support of what we're doing. Um, you know, uh, and it's consistent with what you've done with NTIA. It's consistent with what you've done with ARPA. So there shouldn't be any surprises in there. But before asking you to write a letter of recommendation, I wanted to at least get a synopsis in front of you. Uh, I should have that done by for the January status meeting. This is relatively new release. Uh, but just thought I would bring it to your attention. Um, the, the feds really want, and 100 by 100 also means fiber. <laughs> it uh, wireless is uh, kind of being pushed out of the a scenario unless you're in a downtown region, short distance. Um, so they're really trying to stay technology neutral, uh, but in reality, uh, they really want everybody on fiber. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, the other thing they've done for the consumer is they've rewritten or are in the process of rewritten writing what is called EBB. And EBB will give an opportunity for a $30 a month uh, subsidy, much like the lifeline was for the phone, uh, to those who are in need uh, in order to help them get connected. So both of those are two tracks that are going through Congress today. Uh, some of it's been passed into law um, and uh, the legislation um, people are working on finalizing the language uh, that usually happens after the law is passed. Is there any questions? Uh, uh, yeah, just to, maybe just to break this down a little bit so we can, because these are public meetings and you get out to the public, what is, is that it's like the, the program that we okayed over there for Mid Forest Lodge yes. or Nestor Township and part of Southern Richfield and part of uh, Bacchus. Bacchus or all of Bacchus, but what's the, what was the individual cost that you were gonna to be to those people to hook up once you get it in? I know the people from Mid Forest Lodge have jumped on this, but an individual that lived at Mid Forest Lodge, how much was it gonna cost yes, them a month? Mid Forest Lodge, uh, understanding their economic position, uh, uh, are each paying $1,200 a household um, to get connected uh, to our system a year uh, no uh, no that twelve hundred dollars is a uh, one-time payment for the one time one-time payment and then what is and it? It, it, so our subscription rate on a monthly basis is the same no matter where we're at in the uh throughout a region right and right now it's 88 dollars for 50 by 50 it is 128 for 100 by 100 and 156 dollars for a full one gig um, we're seeing because of the changes at the federal and state level of the 100 by 100, uh, we're working on changing our material and we'll start publishing probably before spring of 2022 that the $88 will go to 100 by 100 and then we'll introduce a 250 mag for those who want that faster speed at the 128 and then the gig will stay there at 156. Those speeds and costs are consistent with the federal average uh, for the nation, right. uh, which is required under our DOF. And we've always kind of been there anyway. So. Yeah, the only point I was getting at there, you know, broadband is there, there's a cost. Yes. Okay. And and what if I personally, if I wanted to go out and get it at my place, I live on North Richfield and I have nothing, but if I want to get it, it's going to cost me substantially more than that. Yeah. So, what we're trying to do is use all these federal programs and monies coming in to reduce our costs to deliver broadband uh, as we do it is about $5,000 a household. And that's hard when you have an $88 a month subscription to get a return on investment within a couple year period. It's at $5,000 that we picked up that full debt, 
uh, would take us five or six years to start getting a return. And that's just too long for, for any business. So we, we set the expectation in Nestor Township that the installation fee is going to be somewhere around $500 to $1,200. We're hoping we can raise more money, more federal dollars to reduce the consumer, what we call consumer participation rate. But yes, there is a cost. It's just like if you were to ask for electric service to be brought into your home, you're going to pay to have that line brought in. If you're asking for a septic system to be put in, that's a utility. It's going to cost you money for the septic. DT Energy is the same way. So this is a utility. And there is a connection charge that's part of that process. And so I just, have been very I just wanted to clarify because I think the average taxpayer looks out there and, oh, oh we're, getting, we're getting Internet. It's going to be free. No, not going to be free. Like you just said, Tim, it's a utility. Yes. I, I And I agree with that. I just wanted to make sure that if there's anybody out there that, no, I'm sorry, it's not free. No. I mean, well, we, we but this, but this is, again, but no, this, is going to, this is going to be a lot more inexpensive. Yes. Yeah, and I, there's, there's also benefits to it because your property, if you have internet access like that, is going to be worth more. The, the latest study is 5.1% if your home is connected to fiber. Right. Your value of your home is increased. Um, so to get something, you got to give something. Yes. So <laughs> that's, that's the only thing. I don't want to pound it to death. I just, I just want to make sure that people understand that. Okay. okay. All right. And so now is that the end of February? Uh, that? It's, it's middle of February. Middle of February. Okay. I just want to make sure that we... That we're on. We're ahead of this thing rather than behind it. So we want to be ready by the first week in February to actually complete the application and submit it. Okay. Uh, okay. Any? Yes. We'll come up with a synopsis and we'll work with uh, Jody and her team to get a proper resolution. Uh, that reflects the synopsis and previous actions the board has already done. Okay. I'll probably do it in that back presentation at our work session so that we can look at it and vote on it the following two weeks after that, which is our prop, which is usually our, which is how we do things. So, Excellent. okay, I do appreciate it. It's uh, any other <coughs> any other commissioners got any questions, please? Yep, nice report. Yep, nice presentation, Officer. Not knowing you're going to do one today. <laughs> That's why they pay me the big bucks. Right. There you go. Okay. On to uh, Board of Commissioners 2022 meeting schedule. <clears throat> Michelle, before she left on vacation, took some time and put some things together for us, our consideration today. Thank you, Michelle, from the clerk's office. Um, so first off, we'll start with... Uh, Page two, which is the uh, budget airport committee meetings. I guess I'm going to ask Mr. Commissioner Milburn if that is acceptable on those particular dates and days. And you only have six meetings next year, correct? Okay. It looks good to me. Okay. Um, Roscommon County Animal Control, that'd be him. I'm doing good. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> um, yeah, we discussed this a little bit at the, I think the last meeting we had, we got another meeting tomorrow. Um, but yeah, um, looks good to me. Okay. All right. And we're on to the actual meeting dates for next year um, unless I miss something took my 2022 calendar and every one of our dates are good on Wednesdays but I wouldn't want input on November November and December um, they're the 9th and the 23rd, and um, that's the day before Thanksgiving. We did that this past year. 
seemed to work out fine. I was all right with it. Anybody, everybody else all right with it? Okay. Well, I know we've changed it from time to time, Mr. Chair, but I think Wednesdays is right into our schedule and it's easier for the public knowing our meetings right on time to time. Well, it leaves it roughly the same on our second, our, our fourth Wednesday in a month. So it just stays consistent with that. I, I do know it gets confusing anytime we do move a date. So I just leave it that way. And it's, it's in the morning, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, in regards to December, I've got down the 7th, which is the first Tuesday, and then the 21st, which is the third Wednesday, excuse me, the first first Wednesday is the seventh, the second, the third one is the 21st is the, those are moved up because traditionally what we've done there is between Christmas and New Year's, we don't meet. That's still what everybody's? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So December, the dates are actually the first thing. Did you just say that? Yes. I'm sorry. Based. She got caught on the fact that November 9th is the day after an election, the election. Yeah, I was I was going back on that and I'll just have someone else from my office. I'll just we'll work with scheduling and try to make sure that someone's rested. Right. You know that on the ninth. Right. So So, so yeah, we're just looking at so December is the only one that we change instead of being the second and the fourth, it's the first and the third. Now the only thing I want to find out is is that at that 21st meeting, we have to have the final claims and accounts and budget adjustments done on have them ready on the 20th to be voted on on the 21st. Is that a problem, Jody? That's we done it past. I just yeah, want to make sure it's out there. Everything will just have to be divided the Friday before on time for everything. Data entry and then go through and update all the budget adjustments. Okay. All right. And then um, onto the next page is uh, claims and accounts, which every one of my check those dates out are the Tuesday ahead of the Wednesday. So they have to be done by that day. And then meetings of the whole, which, which is pretty much for a uh, we have those throughout the year. Be looking at our budget uh, in April. We'll basically be in April. We'll be looking at. We'll have a lot of the finalized stuff from 2021, and in August, in October, and November, we start the process of 2023's budget. So, and those are all meetings after our regular meetings. So, okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. I noticed on the Budget and Finance Committee of the whole, somebody changed it to the 26th, which actually is the meeting date. So on your copy, does it say October 24th or October 26th? It says 24th, mine does. So it needs to be the 26th. Correspond with the meeting. Oh, 26th. Yep, you're right. So that's okay. That's why we go over these things. So October 24th needs to be changed to the 26th, which is one of our meeting days. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Nice catch. Um, and holiday closures. Um, I think everything is pretty self-explanatory except when you get to December because we ran into a snag there because we're going to run into that same thing with the courts next year. No, we are not. Okay. Yeah. So we don't. We won't have. So that twenty-third. The two days off are the 23rd and the 26th, and then the 30th, which is New Year's, because New Year's is on a Sunday, so the 31st are not open. Okay. Anybody else catch anything? Looks good to me. Yep. Looks good to me. Okay. The one thing that I do want to add is, obviously, if the state decides that they add on holidays, that will be something that would have to be adjusted and adopted by this board because the courts. Um, must follow state closures. So right. Just put that out there. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Unless anybody else got anything up here? We'll recess till 10 o'clock. Have a couple. Okay. Good morning. Welcome to the Rascal County Board of Commissioners regular meeting, December 8th, 2021. 
10 o'clock a.m. hybrid meeting accessible in person or via Zoom. Item number two, the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Commissioner Milburn, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number three, roll call of board members, please. Here. 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 Item number four, approval of the agenda, please. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Milburn, seconded by Commissioner Russo to approve the agenda. Any further discussion from any commissioner at this time, please? Hearing none, seeing none, roll call. Hockenthaler. Yes. Snyder. Yes. 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 Item number five, approval of the minutes for meetings regular meeting November 10th, 2021 and November 24th, 2021. So moved. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Russo, seconded by Commissioner Muckenthaler to approve the minutes of November 10th, 2021 and November 24th, 2021. Further discussion from any commissioner at this time. Hearing or seeing none, roll call. Silver? Yes. Snyder? Yes. 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 Okay. On to Class A claims and accounts. Do I have them in here? Packet. Probably got probably in my packet. I got them right here. Okay, Michelle, we are up with uh, Class A's. Move to approve Class A bills in the amount of six hundred fifteen thousand one hundred seventy-three dollars and forty-four cents. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Motion was made by Commissioner Muckenthaler, seconded by Commissioner Snyder to approve Class A's in the amount of five six hundred. $15,173.44. Any further discussion from any commissioner at this time? Hearing or seeing none, roll call. Russo. Yes. Milburn. Yes. Snyder. Yes. Gonzaler. Yes. Motion carried. Claims and accounts, please. Move to approve claims and accounts in the amount of $46,435.70. So moved. I'll second. Motion made by Commissioner Russo, seconded by Commissioner Muckenthaler to approve claims and accounts in the amount of $46,435.70. Any further discussion, please? You're not seeing any? Seeing any? Um, roll call. Wilburn? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Muckenthaler? Yes. Russo? Yes. Okay. Item number seven, public comment, agenda items only, limited to five minutes. Public comment at this time, please. Okay. Item eight, administrator controller report. Well, good morning. Um, not any changes in any of the lawsuits. We're basically sitting the same, um, waiting for court of appeals, court date assignments, um, still scheduled for early March for the sheriff's arbitration and waiting for the final package in the next few months um, in regards to the opiate suit. It's about eight million to be distributed over 18 years between 67 counties. So we'll see what that ends up looking like. Um, quick legislative update for you. Wait, back up a minute. You said 67 counties are going to share in that? Yes. That because we signed on and the other ones didn't? Correct. Good. Okay. There Good. are some amounts that the state will give those counties that didn't participate, but there's, of course, some fancy formula that will be utilized um, for distributions. And I'm sure that there will be uh, caveats for exactly what it can be utilized for. So, Sheriff, I'm going to guess we'll probably see some of this coming your way over the next 18 years. You'll be retired at the end of the time we get it, but... <laughs> 
Well, I, I, the only reason I brought that up is because I remember way back when we authorized to sign on to this thing, um, we didn't we didn't know 100 percent if it was going to be a good thing or not, but it, it indicated it wasn't. It turned out it is good that we're on. So, OK, thank you. Um, Senate Bill 565 is the bill that is going through at the state level um, fairly quickly in regards to the allocation of $3.3 billion in restricted and federal funding for infrastructure dams, lead, PFAS, wastewater, drinking water, and wetlands. The two areas of this bill that are the most pertinent to our county are the fact that there will be grants available for culvert replacement through county drainage projects. So that'll be one um, that'll be one for Rex to look into for some of these areas that may have older culverts um, between him and the road commission. The other portion of this, which is not good news for us, but just is news you should be aware of, um, the bill actually allocates 250 million to the Four Lakes Dam Task Force, um, and then directs and ties the rest of the additional funds set forth for dams to a revolving loan fund for repair, reconstruction, or removal of dams. The other portion is that that has to still meet certain criteria. Um, they look at the number of affected people, whether or not um, severity of flooding would be considered, loss of life, loss of property, um, if there was a failure of a dam. So the odds of us getting any of that money for our three lake level control structures are slim to none. Um, and it's a loan, so you'd still have to pay it back. So just throwing that out there. Day-to-day um, -day stuff, we did receive a preliminary proposal at the end of last week from the engineers on the Holton Lake level control structure. Commissioner Russo, I believe I forwarded that to you. So we'll have to um, look that over a little bit in the in the next few months here and decide if that's appropriate um, and, and work from there, I guess. We do have three, uh, three members of the Emergency Management Board that will be interviewing our two internal candidates this Friday, and then that final recommendation will be made to the Board of Commissioners, um, both at the work session and then for approval on the December 22nd meeting. I will send you, of course, an email ahead of time so you can assist in whether or not you're for or against. Um, the, the same week, uh, it to be a busy, busy personnel meeting for you, um, we are going to need to replace our Director of Maintenance and Facilities, Nick Johnson with um, some of the changes that have happened. He needs to actually stay in the Standish area for his son who is little. Um, and I have reached out to the runner up candidate from our last interview, so that were less than a year ago. And we are discussing a potential offer to him and him coming on board, um, which he would have been a great fit as well. I'm very sad about Nick and I kicked him in the knee. I'm kidding, I didn't. Um, but that is, that is how it goes. Um, we do have interviews for the part-time equalization clerk this Friday. That position would start in January. Um, Director Hauserman and then Brittany Baker, our uh, GIS, are doing the interviews. It's a great experience for Brittany. So that will be great. Um, we did host via Zoom the NMCA meeting December 6th. I will be trying to, I'm working with um, John from MSUE in order to get that full presentation available to everybody, but it's such a large download that we've got to have like a link for people specifically to go to for it. Um, but there was some pretty good discussions in regards to the privatization of portions of mental health, additional discussions um, in regards to, we had Kurt Vanderwall was on the phone um, some of his concerns of why this could be a good thing in regards to the lack of ability. Um, there are issues. We can't act like it's perfect and why this is like the first step in his opinion to improving a lot of those issues. Um, obviously beds are, beds are an issue in Northern Michigan. We all know that um, staffing is an issue in Northern Michigan, but I think, uh, Mr. Vanderwall, his, his big concerns and the things he's been hearing is that disconnect between the um, law enforcement, jails, mental health, um, our community mental health, and how there's a lot of the passing of the buck. Um, and so people are falling through the cracks. And that's an issue that he's hoping, hoping they will be able to rectify in the next few years. So we did hold a booster clinic for our county employees and um, eligible contractors last Friday. Thank you to Danielle again, Denise, for organizing that. Um, she's really been, been the lead contact is getting those things going in the county here. 
Um, I've been working with Eagle for some of the reporting for our landfill to see uh, where we're at with the status of that. Probably also the article last week, our jail is obviously still battling an outbreak um, of COVID. Sheriff Stern, I think, has done everything correctly and above and beyond leading up to this point. Some things just happen. Um, that being said, I was approached by the Sheriff's Administration in regards to looking at hazard pay for our corrections officers. Um, what do you think the percentage is, Sheriff, of inmates right now? I can't remember. So you have your corrections officers um, in direct contact with that every single day. So this is, this is in my opinion, um, it's different than some of the other things you've talked about or you've thought about. Um, this, is, this is at a level that we have not yet seen um, and will continue for, for quite some while. I mean, obviously any type of closed living facility is going to be hard hit once, once the doors are open to an infectious disease. So. Additionally to that, we have our jail <laughs> registered nurse who has currently been working, I'd say anywhere from 60 to 65 hours a week, um, contracted for 35 hours per week in the jail. She's been doing this at least since March. Um, she is now testing every inmate every day. Um, just a lot more of those, a uh, lot more of those COVID related duties. So in that, um, at the next meeting, I will be presenting to you a <clears throat> proposal to put additional money to the hours that the jail RN has utilized for COVID related purposes, um, plus looking at hiring on a temporary um, nurse to assist with that during not just this, but I mean, just the COVID testing in and of itself that is done takes away from you know, she's, she oversees the needs of an average of 60 to 70 inmates per day for medical assessments. And that's a, that's a huge area of responsibility, but it's also a huge liability that she takes on as a contracted person. So that is something um, with this uh, ARP funding reserved for the county that you have the ability to utilize for and is specifically laid out. So I'm going to make a recommendation to you at the next work session. I have also... Um, been working with Tony through MERS in regards to uh, information for closure of non-union defined contribution plans. If there's a savings cost for us, um, how to make that fair and equitable to the employees. Noelle and I uh, should be presenting that at the December 22nd work session as long as we've had time to digest that ourselves um, and if it's actually something worth looking at. So I don't know the answer to that at this point in time. So that is it. Okay. Hey, commissioners, any questions for our controller, please? I'm totally open in support of hazardous duty pay for our law enforcement officers. I'm looking forward to the discussion that we can have. It would be proactive, but whatever recommendations that would come forward, I would be certainly look at it very uh, favorably, and I respect the position that you're in, Mr. Sheriff, and for all those in law enforcement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, any questions for Jody? <laughs> Okay, got a lot going on, Jody. Per usual, right? Yeah. It is the season, correct? Okay. Item number nine under correspondence. Item A, NMRE response to Senate Bills 597 and 598, and that is in regard to the mental health that Jody touched on. Item B is NACO's 2022 legislative conference. Item C is the HLRCC newsletter. D is a MAC legislative report from November 19, 2021. E is an ACO reconciliation package information. F is humanitarian crisis email and Oakland County re resolution. Copy of that. And G is an RTA November 18, 2021 meetings, minutes, excuse me. And I think also an added report is from uh, MSU Extension, Rebecca Stova, in, pro in process of from some information in regards to uh, programs with MSU remote learning resources. Everybody get that? Okay. Anybody, any commissioners have any questions at this time, please? Nope. 
Item 10, monthly department reports. Ross Common, EDC, October, November 2020 and 21. That's the report from uh, Brenda Batchelder. And item B is the MSU December 2021 summary. Any questions in regards to monthly department reports? Nope. Okay, item number 11, under visitors. Steve and Peggy, I see that they arrived. Nice to have you. You want to come on up for a few minutes, please? Whereas the person Whereas Yeah. 
You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, item number 12 under unfinished or new business. ARP letters. Okay, she's ready to go. So I had reported um, two weeks ago that we had gotten all of the letters out to all of the grantees. I did give them 30 days from the date of receipt of the letter to sign that contract and send it back in. Even if they don't get money in 2021, we do want to know who's really actually committed to their programs and who's not. Um, I do actually have a few, <clears throat> four, that have not either reached out to me or um, sent anything back. So I will follow up with them this week and just let them know. Um, two are the townships, so I believe they probably have to have that signature and agreement approved through their board meeting, which should be within the next week here that we should hear something. Um, and then the other two, I'm really unsure why I haven't received anything. So I will do that follow up with them as well. Um, we have dispersed, including what we've dispersed here to date to Cherry Capital, um, $537,077 back into the community at this point. Um, for us, Common County United Way has received their funding to start the programs. We will then, at the beginning of January, turn around and distribute those 2022 payments to people as well. And then everything will be on hold until we get the rest of the money from the federal government. Um, so that's where we are. Okay. So actually, 21, all of 21 meeting has been allocated. Uh, with the exception of to the two townships that have okay. not. Other than those two, all right. Other than those two, yeah. All right, and then and we know what the amount is to be. In um, one check, still 20, 10. <laughs> in, 20, in 22, we have, of course, we don't have to pay that till the end of 22 or, or before. We'll pay it at the beginning. We'll so pay it at the beginning in January, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. okay. And then when do we anticipate the second half of that money coming in? The end of, um, is that the end of 22 or the beginning of 23? It's supposed to be at the same time that we received it in 2021, which would be end of April, beginning of May. Next um, year? Yes, next year. Okay. All right. So if we get it early, we can give it early. That's the way I look at it. The sooner we can proceed funding in there. Um, I think there's one or two that may not need it at that time because they'll be waiting on maybe matching grant. Um, to, to go towards the project, but that's something that they'll need to communicate. Otherwise, the board will have to make a decision on if they want to allocate that money in a different format. Right, and then um, one of the things we've tossed around, and I know you and I have not talked about this, but talking about a contracted per person to, to uh, um, organize this program and keep, keep track of it, are we still considering that? So I'm going to be honest with you, and at this point, I'm three-fourths of the way through organizing everything. 
I've got 700 binders. I've got the tracking set up for the Excel. Um, so I don't know that we need to take $30,000 and pay somebody else to do it. Okay, let's, let's go. I know we were up in the air about that. Go ahead. We'd like to jump in. You know, we were going to hire Joni's teacher, taking her time. I'm sorry. And work on weekends and after hours doing all this. I think we should give Jody something for doing the extra work that we were going to pay somebody and hire somebody. She's into it. She wants to continue to do it. I think we should contract with Jody at this point. Thank you. I think that's something we'll, we can look into. Um, right now, I think, you know, you're just, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I think it's a good idea. I think it's something that we need to look at and, and see exactly what it is. I, I see value in Commissioner Russo's uh, comment. But without knowing the logistics, yeah, the, num just, the numbers and so forth, we can work on that, okay? Yeah. All right. In other words, or keep it in-house. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. Okay, yeah. so we'll, we'll need to work out. She's we'll need to work it out. Work. Right? I just know it was out there, and I wanted it addressed. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else in regards to ARP money? Because that's going to continue to be on there. It's going to be something we're going to probably have on there for the next three years. Oh. So, uh, any other input from any commissioners in regards to that? Okay. Any other new or old business that the want, commissioner wants to bring up? Okay. Item number three, motions and resolutions, please. Michelle, we are ready for motion number one, please. Which was previously motion number two. Good job. Ready? Yep. Move to reappoint Sherry Sierra Mataro to the Blodgett Memorial Airport Advisory Committee for a two-year term beginning January 1, 2022 through December 31st, 2023. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Milburn, seconded by Commissioner Russo to reappoint Sherry Sierra Mataro to the Blodgett Memorial Airport Advisory Committee. Any further discussion from any commissioner at this time? Hearing or seeing none, roll call. Later. Yes. Yes. Yourself. Yes. Yes. Okay. Motion number three, please. Move to set the 2022 Rest Common County Board of Commissioners organizational meeting for Tuesday, January 4th, 2022 at 9 o'clock a.m. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. Motion made by Commissioner Muckenthaler, seconded by Commissioner Ro Russo to move to set the 2022 Rest Common County Board of Commissioners organizational meetings for for Tuesday, January 4th, 2022 at nine o'clock a.m. Any further comments by any commissioner at this time? Um, the only thing I'd say is, is be prepared that day because we've got uh, board rules. I think it need to be looked at and be updated. Hopefully we'll have some more information on that. I'll allude to that a little bit later. And um, the dates are pretty well taken care of, but there'll be some committees that have to be uh, approved and so forth. So. Okay. Roll call. Silver. Yes. Snyder. Yes. Russo. Yes. Buckingham. Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Item 14, committee reports, please. Mr. Russo wanted to go first, I believe. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the commissioner for donating that $25 gift to you. Uh, the $25 gift certificate for the Christmas tree. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, there was over 80 trees in there this year, and it's something we're doing a good job for the Michigan uh, Child's Assessment Center, and I would like to continue with that program, you know, with a Christmas tree. I know it had a lot of good hits. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Muckenthaler. Um, all I had was the collaborative board. Okay, Mr. Milburn. 
been very busy in the district I've been privileged to represent, but I think the only thing, EDC is the only actual committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, myself was the agenda meeting on Thursday, December 2nd, along with earlier that day, I had the EDC meeting um, at eight o'clock that morning. It was very well attended. Um, uh, Mr. Commissioner Milburn was there also, but I think we both walked away with a very positive because we're getting some really good participation on that committee right now. And uh, I know there's a couple of uh, spots still open, but they've got some really viable candidates to fill those. So uh, we got, it was just nice to see. I think they're moving, moving in the right direction now. And yep, and Mr. Milburn got his donuts that day. So, all right. And then the other thing I'd like to bring up, and this will probably be the appropriate time to do, because last meeting we had some discussion in regards to the meeting flexibility in regards to OMA. Um, I don't know if you guys got it. I did get um, an update from um, Cole Stoker and Toski, um, which are they specialize in open meetings. Um, and uh, at this point, as far as virtually, there's the way I understand it by law, you have to have a quorum physically present at the meeting. It's not anyway, and then two people could be on virtually, but that's not allowed at this point. So state is looking at this thing. Everybody is anticipating that there's going to be some new direction that will go in effect on January 1st. Um, there are some counties, I've got some copies here right now that are doing resolutions. I encourage them to look at that. That's a possibility that we could look at. I haven't had time to look at them yet, um, but I will look at them and get back to you guys on it if you'd like to. So I know you had told me to do some research on it, and I did. I did reach out to uh, John Armarine from uh, MSU Extension for two things. If you had any direction on um, virtual meetings, and he didn't, but he did know one gentleman that was a specialist in it, but I haven't got back to, John hasn't got back to me with that information. And I also asked him about board rules too, in regards to that, and then how do virtual meetings fit into board rules. So um, he's got, he's, he sent me some information on board rules, but unfortunately it doesn't contain anything on virtual. So hopefully after the first of the year, before the first year, we'll know a little bit more about that. So. That's my. That's what I have on that. I do have some articles. I'd, I'd share any of these and with you. And there's a beautiful article. Or beautiful. There's a great article in here in regards to what Crawford County has done, as far as a resolution is concerned. So if you want to read that, you can. Okay. Any other questions in regards to that? I think that's all my meetings and so forth. Nope. Here. Yes. Uh, which commissioners did claims and accounts? I meant to say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> yep. Okay. We did claims and accounts, and Commissioner Muckenthaler and Commissioner Russo did. Yes. Okay. All right. Item number 15 public comment. Any public comment at this time, please? Hello. Yes, me. Yes. Hello. Hey, Roy. How? Good morning. How are you? Good, how are you? How are you? Doing great. You you got the floor, sir. Okay, I'd like to start with a question, please. Um, did I hear something a little bit earlier about uh, giving hazard pay to county deputies? Corrections to, to corrections officers, not deputies. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, all right. I did not attend the last meetings. Uh, I got selfish and went fishing instead, but um, I did view the recordings on YouTube and there are a number of things that I'd like to address. Uh, regarding the comments on vaccine effectiveness, usually one must seek out uh, paragons of journalistic virtue like Breitbart News or Gateway Pundit to hear vaccine conspiracy theories of such intricacy. Um, let's be clear. Uh, they're not alternative viewpoints, they're not other opinions, they're lies and they're dangerous. I believe in public comment and free speech, I'm making one now, but I would urge the commission to possibly screen those maybe a little bit more 
early in the future. Facts are that well over 90% of COVID deaths are occurring among the unvaccinated. Further, NPR just published a study that says the counties that voted over 60% for the Republican candidate for president, that's us, could have, would have COVID rate death rates of 2.7 times what counties that didn't have. The difference is the vaccination rates between these particular counties. Ms. Valentino gave a figure of 30% vaccination rate among county employees. Um, if that's true, and I have no reason to doubt her, it's frankly disgraceful. Um, it means the county employees and by extension, the county building are a danger to public health. Ms. Morley asked, uh, if this place is dangerous, why are we here? Well, she was there because she's running for a state house seat. Um, Commissioner Melvin mentioned that one county employee has died of COVID and two more were on ventilators at the time of the meeting. COVID has now killed over 780,000 Americans, making it the greatest mass casualty event in our nation's history. Greater than the Civil War. Think about that. There's been a talk that vaccination mandates are a violation of individual rights. Such mandates have eliminated smallpox and polio and mitigated the effects of many other dangerous diseases. Few people question them until COVID. What about the right of individuals to have reasonable assurance of common sense public health policy? And if individuals don't have that right, why are county employees prohibited from smoking in the county building? In, clo in closing, while I'm not crazy about using my tax dollars to bribe someone into doing what they should be doing anyway, as the saying goes, by any means necessary. Since you've declined to use the carrot, I hope you'll give serious consideration into using the stick. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, Leroy. Any other public comment, please, at this time? I see none, none up there. I see none around. So with that, um, item number 16, please. Second. Motion made by Mr. Commissioner Milburn, second by Commissioner Russo to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Ooh, and come back for our next meeting is on uh, December 22nd at nine o'clock. Hope and Christmas party is Friday at noon, this Friday at noon. So for, for the 17th, excuse me.